how I'd hoped our appearance on Oprah would help turn the business around. Unfortunately, it did not. We seemed to hit a plateau, but we did become known as the Salon to the Stars, catering to such notables as Susan Anton, Tom Arnold, Matt Dillon, Timothy Hutton, Jack Plugman, Lorenzo Lamas, Mary Stewart Masterson, Donny Osmond, Doc Severinsen, Jay Thomas, Stephanie Powers, Robert Wagner, Sean Casty, Steve Gutenberg, Greg Luganis, Caroline Ray, sports announcer Jim McKay, Al Gore, and Hillary Clinton, to name a few. I wanted Sheik to be known as the best of the best, and I was a stickler for intensive associate development. I thought it not only good business, but it would build pride in employee performance. We did our best to fulfill the desires, ambitions, and overall career for our team by giving them decision-making power, educational responsibility, and evolving economic opportunity. In other words, I gave too much freedom and paid them too much. I had yet learned to pay myself first. I also learned that neither winning awards nor national publicity brings in local clients. So to cover expenses, I worked part-time as a cantor in a Catholic church, traveled as a guest artist with Joyco, and sang with various professional choral ensembles such as the Dale Warland singers. It was around that time when I called my mother and asked how she was doing. She replied, I'm old, I'm fat, and I'm going to hell in a handbasket. So I pulled out my charge card and bought her a facelift. My reason was twofold. One, I wanted to see my mother gain the self-confidence she had lost, and two, I wanted to pitch a young and sexy again makeover segment for the Oprah show. I called the producer with whom I worked on the Oprah show. Candy and I became instant friends during the precarious and hilarious day of trial and error dressing the makeover models. Though my pitch failed to pass muster, seeing my mom back to her glamorous self was and continues to be priceless. Though we were still barely afloat, we kept on treading water. You see, I had made a bad lease deal with a wolf in sheep's clothing named Jeff Lux. Naively, I had agreed to give 10% of our total income on top of rent for two racquetball courts, in an athletic club, on the sixth floor of a hotel. Not too bright. But after five years as my star stylist, I was proud to promote Tara Farley to general manager. She was a lifesaver, allowing me to work on something I had forgotten. People wonder why I'm a beauty operator. You see, I never wanted to be a hairdresser. It was just a job to fall back on should my dream of being a star of stage, screen, and television not come to fruition. Let me take you back to 1985. If you don't believe in fate, believe that seemingly out of nowhere, I was given an opportunity to audition for the Minnesota Orchestra. And lo and behold, I was signed with the Cabaret Pops, as well as their 1996 Christmas and New Year's Eve celebrations. 